Hey guys, thanks for coming back to the Minuteman Prep YouTube channel. My name is Ben and this is the Yoshino B4000 Power Station. Now, if you've been watching my videos for a while, when I went to the CES 2023 event in Las Vegas earlier this year, I actually saw this unit firsthand when it was still not in full production. These are now in full production and ready for people to order. And I'll have links down below if you're interested in that to be able to get this product here. And they do have smaller units as well, like their B2000, B660, and the B330. What's different about Yoshino is they are paving the way when it comes to solid state battery technology. They are using solid state batteries in all of their systems. There are other brands like Zender who are also using solid state battery technology, but they also do use lithium iron phosphate. Yoshino wants to focus on the newest and best technology. So they are doing solid state batteries only, which is really cool. And with the B4000, you do have the option to stack on many, many more batteries. It does have wireless chargers. It's got 4,000 watts of inverter output, pure sine wave. It's got an MPPT charge controller, all sorts of great features. The real question is, is it gonna be powerful enough for an emergency power outage? I'm here at my off-grid cabin. Would it run my off-grid cabin? If I needed to bring my family to a safe area, is it gonna be powerful enough running the equipment as well as have enough battery and solar input? And that's what I'm gonna discuss here in this video. So make sure you stay to the very end. So first things first, if you get the B4000 from Yoshino, it weighs up close to about 60 pounds. So it is hefty, but not so hefty that you can't move it around. One thing that amazes me is how compact it is. That is the advantage of using solid state battery technology. Now it has a 4,000 watt continuous output rating on the pure sine wave inverter, and its max output rating, which is the peak, is rated to 6,000 watts. Typically, we prefer to see double the continuous output rating, meaning that the peak should be 8,000 watts, but 6,000 watts is plenty. For any 120 volt item, I don't know anything that's going to surge higher than 6,000 watts, so I feel like that's pretty fair. It has a 2,611 watt hour battery capacity. That is a fair amount for emergency backup power. To give you some perspective, a refrigerator will use anywhere from about 100 to 125 watt hours per hour. Now, if the term watt hours per hour doesn't make sense, let me explain really quick. When you're using energy, when there's energy flowing from the battery through the inverter and to your device, at any given second or moment in time, the energy flowing through the wire that is measured in watts. So a refrigerator will use roughly 400 watts when it is running. But because refrigerators don't run for 60 minutes of every hour, it's not going to use 400 watt hours in an hour. They typically run anywhere from about 15 to 20 minutes total of an hour, depending on how much you get in and out of them, as well as how full they are and all those different things. So generally, you can say about 125 watt hours will be used in a one hour period because it's going to keep turning on and then turning off and then turning on and turning off. And while it's on, it's going to use 400 watts. And so the way you measure energy used is you do watts over one hour, and that's termed as watt hours. So if I had a 400 watt load for one hour, that's 60 minutes or 100% of an hour, that would be 400 watt hours of energy consumed off of the battery. But since it only runs for about a quarter to about a third of an hour, for every hour that the fridge is running, we take about a quarter or a third of 400 watts, and that gets us somewhere in the range of about 125 watt hours for every hour that the fridge is running. That's going to be an average. It's going to fluctuate between during the day when you're getting in and out of it more, as well it's gonna be hotter during the day than compared to at night. Now the benefit of that is at night, we're not getting in it as much, Ambient temperatures are typically cooler, which means generally it will use less watt hours per hour at night, which means you have to rely on the batteries a little bit less at night, meaning it's gonna last a little bit longer off of the battery capacity. It does have a built-in fast charger for wall charging, so you can get this from zero to full quite fast. But because this is a heavy item, when you get it, you wanna make sure that you open up the box and then tilt it over on its side, 180 degrees, and pull off the big brown shipping box. Put that to the side, make sure you keep it in case you ever have to ship it back for some sort of warranty issue. And then you'll flip over the internal box back to where the bottom is on the bottom. Then you'll open that up and then once again, flip it over upside down to get this unit out of the actual advertising box. So that way you're not having to lift it up and then put it down. Easiest way is just to flip the boxes over and let gravity do its work. Out of the box, you're gonna get the B4000 as you see it right here. And I'm gonna show you more about it here in just a second, but you're also going to get their welcome packet. 
There's something really impressive about their welcome packet. Not only do they give you a thank you card, that's pretty typical. They include all of their contact information right here. They have a quick start guide, which has a QR code, which allows you to get the app Regardless if you're using Android or Apple, you're going to be able to download the app so you can get connected to this and monitor it from anywhere in the world as long as it's connected to Wi-Fi. They have all sorts of connections and diagrams and uh, explanations here. So make sure you read the quick start guide and I highly recommend going through the user manual as well. So you're going to find important information, for example, how to use the expansion batteries right here. And then as well as all the specs as far as battery capacity, input, output, all of those ratings. One of the most key things that I look at is the solar input. For me, because I look at these systems for emergency backup power, I'm considering that I don't have grid power or even a gas generator. Now, I have multiple gas generators as backups, but I want to make sure that if I had to depend on solar, if I had a sunny day, that I would be able to recharge this quickly. The charge parameter is 12 to 60 volts DC. That's going to be your VOC rating on your solar panel and up to 10 amps max. So you can get up to 600 watts of solar input. That's what the MPPT charge controller is rated to. Now, it having a 2.6 kilowatt hour battery capacity and up to 600 watts of solar input or 0.6 kilowatts of solar input. The question I always ask is, can it be charged in a single day? In the United States, the average amount of solar peak hours in a day is five solar peak hours. In the Southwest, it's actually much higher. And in the Northeast, it's much lower, but the average is five hours a day. That also depends on the time of the year. During the summer, you're going to get more. During the winter, you're going to get less. So again, we're just working with averages here. But all we have to do is take five solar peak hours in a day, multiply it by 600 watts of solar input if we can actually get the full 600 watts to go in. And that tells us the maximum amount of battery capacity we can get in a single day, which turns out to be 3000 watt hours. So since this has 2600 watt hours, then technically we can get this fully charged from zero to full in a single day off of solar input. The follow-up question is though, can I be running equipment and solar charge at the same time and go from 0% to 100% in a single day. Now that becomes problematic because with 600 watts, if I'm running a 100 watt load constantly every hour while the 600 watts is coming in, then I have 100 watts coming in from the solar panels and running the equipment. And that means only 500 watts is going to the battery. Keep in mind, watts over one hour equals watt hours and batteries are measured in watt hours. So in a five hour period, if I'm only getting 500 watts in, all we do is we take five hours, multiply that by 500 watts, and we get 2,500 watt hours of battery capacity to go into this in that five hour window with those five solar peak hours. So at that point, we could get up to like 90 to 95% from zero to 90 or 95% with 500 watts going to the battery. And that's pretty good, but that means that that 2,500 watt hours has to be enough from when the solar peak hours end all the way into the next day to when the solar peak hours begin once again. And that's probably the only weak point that I can see on the B4000. This is not meant to be an expandable unit where you can get 240 volt power. It is expandable with extra batteries, but I wish they had closer to 1200 watts or even ideally 2000 watts of solar input. Now they may make some alterations in the future or come out with other systems that have more solar input. But that's pretty much the only weak point that I see. And then the other preference that I would have had is if they could have taken two of these units and put them together in series to be able to have 240 volt power. Since this has a 4000 watt inverter, it would be incredible to have two of these units with the capability to output 8000 watts. That would be even beating the Delta Pro, which is a very high output setup. But because it doesn't have that, it doesn't win in that category. One way that it does win though, is this last piece of paper here is a five year warranty. In my opinion, a company that puts a big warranty behind their system, either one knows it's gonna fail, which is not likely the case, but two and most commonly found is that they are so confident that they're not gonna have any issues that they are willing to put a big warranty behind their product because they just don't think that they're gonna to have to deal with any issues. And that is exactly what Yoshino has done with this five-year warranty. So that impresses me. They do stand behind their product and they are 100% confident that it's going to work well. Now in this box here is just the accessories box. It comes with the DC 5521 to cigarette lighter port adapter. You'll notice there is no cigarette lighter port on the unit. And part of that is to keep it more compact. For reference, this is roughly about half of the size 
of a Delta Pro. For the AC300 from Bluetti, just the main unit alone, which doesn't include the batteries, is bigger than this from Bluetti. And that would apply for the AC500 as well. And for the High Solus Apollo, it's about half the size as well, maybe even less than half the size. It also has half the battery capacity, doesn't have some expandability features, but for the size, this is incredible how compact it is to have such a powerful 4,000 watt inverter and 2.6 kilowatt hours of battery. For all that recharging, you have an XT60 to MC4 adapter, as well as a car charger, which can do up to 100 watts. And then you have your typical wall charger. This is a fast wall charger, meaning there is no adapter brick. You just plug it into an outlet, plug it straight into this, and it works charging very fast. On the front, you're gonna have the power button, the Wi-Fi button, the screen. You're gonna have the DC5521 barrel connectors as well as the USB ports. It's got two USB-A. They're both 3.0 rated. You have one USB-C, which is rated to 100 watts output, and then one USB-C that's rated to 20 watts output. And then of course, you've got the light bar, and the light bar is actually pretty dim, and I prefer that. I don't like a huge bright flashlight on these. It's rare that I want a really bright one. I want Want an ambient light that doesn't blind me, especially since I would be looking at the screen. It probably would have been best to have this light on the back. I personally prefer to have a light that shines out the back because then I use that against the wall and it becomes a floodlight and helps make the ambient light work in a room. This is definitely a softer light. It doesn't blind you really bad and I appreciate that they did that. On the back side, the biggest thing we're going to want to look at is the battery expansion port, which is right here. You do have to use their own batteries and that's pretty typical because it comes down to communication. The main battery as well as the expansion battery have to be able to communicate properly so it's very normal to have proprietary batteries with these systems you've also got your normal 120 volt outlets here you've got your rv connection which is your tt30r and this is actually rated to about 32 or 33 amps of output at 120 volts so this could easily power anything in your rv and then it comes down to the battery capacity to determine how long you're going to run that but easily in an RV, you're gonna run any 30 amp service, no problem. You get your breakers over here as well to make sure that if you do overload the inverter, which is unlikely, that you can reset it. And then up top here, you have your XT60 input port. That's gonna be for your solar and car charging, your fast wall charger port right there as well. The contact information for Yoshino is right here on the sticker. I appreciate them having that so readily, easily available. They are not afraid to take calls and emails from people and get people's questions answered. I've experienced that personally with Yoshino. They've been responsive to my email and to my questions, no problem at all. And their tech support is based here in the United States. So it's always nice knowing that I can talk to someone who I can understand easily and knows my product. There are two wireless charging pads right on the top here. And then on the bottom, you'll have a spec sticker that shows you all the specs that we just went over. And you can see the rubberized pads right here as well. This is definitely a very compact system. I like the idea of using solid state batteries. This is rated to 2,500 cycles for the solid state battery. Lithium iron phosphate batteries are closer to around 3,000 to 3,500 cycles typically. And lithium NMC are about 500, 800, maybe 1,000 cycles, depending on how they are programmed. Solid state batteries, in my opinion, are a really good option, and I truly feel like they are most likely the future of battery technology that we're gonna see over the next decade. And I know this may be hard to see, but the screen is very basic. It has the Yoshino logo on it, shows the battery percentage, and then it shows the estimated runtime of whatever you're running. You turn on each section that you wanna run. So if I wanna turn on the AC power, I simply push the button back here, and then on the front, it'll say AC power. If I wanna turn on the USB, or these DC ports here, I just simply click the button and that turns on that section. So far, the B4000 has been nearly silent when running. It has really good airflow from the front to the back here, and the handles are very comfortable and it just seems like a sleek product. It's very small and compact. The most likely scenario that I see the B4000 is in a van life setup because van life is already a very compact, very minimalist life as it is. And 2.6 kilowatt hours of battery capacity is a lot of battery capacity for a small space. But as far as doing RV, off-grid cabin, or whole home backup, I feel like the B4000 would be really good because of its battery expandability, but unfortunately is lacking on the solar input. At minimum for the battery expansions, it would be ideal to have more solar input on each battery as well to help offset the solar input. I don't have a battery here to know if that's how that works. Overall, I'm really excited that Yoshino is moving forward with this technology and I'm excited to see where they go with it. I just simply wish they had done much more solar input and that's what I shared with them at the CES 2023 event as well. To its merit, it has a larger inverter than a Delta Pro. If you feel like this would be a good option for you, then I want you to comment down below 
or if you feel it's not the right option for you, please comment down below on why it's not the right option for you. And if you do want to get something like this, I'll give you any discounts or anything like that I can get you all in the links down below. So that way, if you're interested, you can find that really easily. I think honestly, one of the coolest ways that I would use this is with my e-bike. I've done bug outs on my e-bike and with my kid carrier, which allows me to hold two kids and up to like 100 pounds of weight, I can go about 25 miles on even rough terrain. And I've tested that uh, with my family. I think what would be really cool with this is my e-bike actually allows me to charge while riding it. I could very realistically see me putting that kid carrier behind my e-bike, putting this inside of that, having the charger running and just going for miles and miles and miles. Maybe that's one of the tests we'll have to do here in the near future. I think that'd be really cool to do with the B4000. It's so compact. Yes, it's heavy, but it's compact. And for that, it gets huge points. If and only if you found this helpful, make sure to smash the like button. If you wanna see more content like this about emergency preparedness, please subscribe. I appreciate you guys watching so much. For any questions, just email me to info at poweredportablesolar.com and I'd be happy to help you guys out. Thanks, be prepared. I'll see you all in the next video.